Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and on the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its heads, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you in the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it, as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. <clears throat> Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. 
he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. And he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, <coughs> I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord true communion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. For those who were at the Palm Sunday service uh, this past Sunday, uh, I framed for all of us this Holy Week uh, in terms of a pilgrimage. Uh, this is our Holy Week, our Holy Pilgrimage Week. And I spoke about uh, what it means uh, to be a pilgrim. I've taken many pilgrimages uh, to the Holy Land, and uh, to be a pilgrim is to get outside oneself, to literally get outside of the normal routines and rhythms of your life, to get outside yourself in order to let God get inside yourself. Uh, the um, posture, the heart of a pilgrim is the heart that is rended, that is open, uh, that is yearning to say, God, I want to meet you. I want to encounter you. I want to know your love. Be present to me as I seek to be present to you. And so with this heart of a pilgrim, uh, we find ourselves tonight as our pilgrimage stops. Uh, in the upper room with Jesus on his last night with his closest friends. And the atmosphere in this moment is one of 
intensity and intimacy. Uh, the intensity is around Jesus has been speaking about his pending betrayal, that he will be handed over, uh, that he will be killed, and on the third day rise again. And the disciples have heard this, and the confrontation with the authorities has been intensifying during this week of, of confrontation. And in the background of all this is the Seder dinner, and our Jewish friends tonight are literally celebrating the Passover Seder as we, as the Christian community, remember the Last Supper. And uh, so in the background is the intense remembrance of God's deliverance of God's people and the blood of the Lamb uh, being smeared on the lintels, uh, reminding Christians later on of the blood of the Lamb of God to be smeared on the cross. And amidst all this intensity, there is still intimacy. These are Jesus' closest friends. And the feeling is, as they gather for this evening meal and as the darkness begins to gather around them, they draw close and Jesus has so much to tell them, so much to show them. And this is this last opportunity, this last supper uh, to share this intimate meal and friendship uh, with his followers. And so as we enter into this atmosphere of holy intensity and holy intimacy, we hear Jesus teaching and demonstrating to us the nature of true communion. Communion is a big word in our Christian tradition. And for me, communion has at its heart companionship with Christ and each other, servant love in response to Jesus' sacrificial love. So I want to talk about true communion. And let me start with companionship with Christ. The word companionship uh, literally means from its Latin roots, the come part means with. Companionship means breaking bread, fellowship around the table, with breaking bread together, companionship. And so tonight Jesus is demonstrating companionship. Uh, but companionship is what God has always intended. Let's go back to the original blessing, the very first chapter where God created Adam and Eve uh, in the image of God, he created them. And he created them to share companionship with each other and with God as they walked together uh, in the Garden of Eden in, in the cool of the evening breeze. Uh, that is God's original blessing and intention for us, companionship with each other and with Christ. And Jesus tonight is making that companionship happen around the table. And around the table of Christ, uh, there is total acceptance and equality. There's no status. There's no pecking order. There's no those who have uh, the power and those who don't. But in the words of Paul, in Christ, there is neither male nor female, slave nor free, Jew nor Gentile. But in Christ, we are a new creation. And in this new creation, we are companions with each other and with Christ in a community of love, the beloved community of Christ. I sometimes think we miss how radical this moment of equality that Jesus is creating, of beloved community he is creating. Uh, in this image of dining together, all barriers between us and God are broken down in the friendship and acceptance of the table. I know I've told this story many times, but it's, it's such a powerful story for us that, that says something about the power of companionship around the table. 
but uh, in the Episcopal Church, we're all so, um, I think, I hope, duly proud, not um, falsely proud, of our great presiding bishop, Michael Curry. Uh, he's truly one of the great preachers of our time, and uh, we're so grateful that he belongs to us, but he belongs, of course, to the world. Uh, and uh, Michael Curry tells the story uh, so many times about how his family uh, became a part of the Anglican Episcopal tradition. His parents uh, were actually Baptists. And back in the 1950s segregated America, um, they found themselves worshiping at an Episcopal church. And at the time of communion, they were invited, as all worshipers are in the Episcopal church, to share a companionship with Christ and communion around the altar, around the table of Christ. And, and so Michael Curry's parents uh, came forward, and as African Americans, uh, they were um, somewhat impressed and noted that uh, there was white and black at the altar rail. And then the person who was bringing the, the common cup around uh, brought the common cup to the white persons that were next to them, and then uh, the Curry family, as African Americans, shared in that, and just continued. Well, this simple fellowship, companionship, where there was suddenly no longer uh, barriers and divisions, bringing up, so impressed his parents, they became members of the Episcopal Church. And they had a child, Michael Curry, who grew up to be the leader of our tradition. The power of companionship and creating a beloved community. Now this companionship with Christ and each other that is part of what Jesus is forming at this Last Supper and through our Eucharistic communion practice expresses itself not just in this moment where we gather for worship and bread and wine are served and we remember Jesus' words. It's meant to be how we live in the world. And how we live in the world, in other words, companionship with Christ and each other in action, is through servant love. And that's why in the context of this Last Supper and the companionship around the table, Jesus does something equally radical. He takes off his outer robe, he puts on a serving, a servant's towel, and he kneels down and he starts washing his followers' feet. The most menial task that the lowest house servant would normally be given in Jesus' world. And Peter, and thank God for Peter, because he speaks the truth even when it's, you know, when he gets it wrong, he still speaks it. And he says, you know, Lord, no way. You know, you can't do this to me. He's speaking the truth of his culture, the truth of a sinful culture that says, hey, there's people on top and people on bottom. There's people who serve and there's people who get served. And let's not break that up. That's the way it's supposed to be. God ordained. Those on top, those on the bottom. Now Jesus responds to Peter's words with equal honesty and strength. If you don't allow me to do this, you can't be a part of me. This is fundamental, Jesus is saying. In the beloved community of God that is forming and being formed in and through me, there is no pecking order. We are to be servants to one another and to the world. That is the way of love. That is the way of God. That is the Jesus way. And then Peter again, thank God, he responds beautifully and he says, you know, Lord, wash not only my feet, but wash my head and my hands, my heart. 
he recognizes that to live this way, to live this servant love, it needs a, there's a transformation that is a whole life transformation. In baptism, we speak about that we are in Christ buried with him in his death. In his baptism, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. There is a new creation. And that new creation is part of a beloved community of love where companionship with Christ and each other and servanthood, life, and love to the world is who we are fundamentally, foundationally. Jesus is teaching us all of this. But he adds something even more to this. He adds that our servant love for each other is in response to and reflective of his love, his sacrificial love for us. At the end of all this, he says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. Love one another just as I let my example, my love be reflected in your servant love for each other. The love of Christ is the love of the Good Shepherd. That's all in. The Good Shepherd that lays down his life for the healing of the world. Lays down his life that a power in our lives the power of forgiveness, the power of new life, the power of love would be released and grow and happen. Love one another, just as I have loved you. And he calls us not to just remember this, Remembrance is a big word tonight. Jesus uses those words. Yeah, remember this. Do this in remembrance of me. But it's even deeper than just memory. He says, take and eat this bread. This is my body. This is my sacrificial love. And you're invited to literally ingest it. And let it be instrumental in your life. Let it work its power in you, its grace in you. Drink this cup and remember my life poured out for you. And let that love be taken in and be received into the very fiber of your being. Take, eat, drink, do this in remembrance of me. That is true communion. It's the promise and the way of life of companionship with Christ in each other. That companionship expressed in our lives through servant love, in response to and enabled by the sacrificial love of Jesus that we literally taste tonight and works its power, the power of love in us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as able.
the Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, the world will know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. Let me just say a word of instruction now about the foot washing and anointing. Um, you'll be invited, those who wish, uh, to come forward. We have four stations for the washing of feet, and uh, you'll be invited to just, as you come forward, we're not going to organize this, that everyone goes this way. As a station opens, you're just welcome to fill right in. Um, you'll be invited to have your feet washed, and then you'll be invited to remain at the station to then wash the next person's feet. And then that person will be invited to then wash the next person's feet. I, I, I think you'll, yeah, you understand how that flows. Uh, in addition, this year we thought we'd add an, uh, 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 an addition to this. Um, on this night, we sometimes remember Mary uh, of Bethany anointing Jesus' feet with perfume. Uh, and so, after getting your feet washed, if you wish to have a special anointing with oil, I'll be standing here uh, in the middle, and you can actually maybe I'll, I'll stand a little off to the side, uh, and then offer anyone who wants a special anointing and blessing as, as well. I recognize that for many reasons, some people are not comfortable with having their feet washed. So there's no judgment tonight. Uh, if you choose not to have your feet washed, truly. Um, but I do invite you uh, to enter into, either literally or certainly spiritually, uh, into uh, this tradition uh, and this example, this way of living uh, that Jesus calls us to and enables us through the sacrament.
set me as a seal on your heart. Set me as a seal on your heart, for love is stronger than death. Amen. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Amen. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Amen. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Amen. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Amen. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Amen. Set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is stronger than death. Amen. On this holy day, we dine together as the body of Christ, and at the table come to love and serve one another. On this holy day, then, let us pray for the church and the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. For the whole Church of God, that it may grow in unity and servanthood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, that in these holy days we may grow in love for one another and for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who will be baptized during the Easter season, that they may rejoice in their passage through death into new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the leaders and people of the world, that reconciliation and peace may overcome conflict and oppression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the hungry in body or spirit, that they may be fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in pain, for the lonely and the forgotten, for the dying and all who mourn, that they may know the full extent of God's love for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And I invite at this time any intercessions you'd like to add either silently or aloud. For Pamela, for David and Elias. In thanksgiving for the saints and martyrs and all the faithful departed who join us at your table of grace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, into your love we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. And with you. Peace to all and welcome. Please be seated for just a moment and great to be together with you tonight. Uh, Welcome to our online worshipers as well. We're delighted you're here uh, sh sharing this Monday Thursday, this Mandate Thursday, this new commandment, love one another as I have loved you Thursday together. Blessings to all. Um, just a few brief announcements. One is to say that uh, the pilgrimage continues tomorrow. Uh, we move as pilgrims from the Last Supper in the upper room where we find ourselves tonight to tomorrow where we walk with Jesus uh, the final three hours is, of his life and end up on Mount Calvary uh, and remember uh, in the shadow of the cross uh, those words that he speaks, the actions that happen, the prayers that are said. Um, so I invite you to join us from 12 to 3 tomorrow, those who can come during the day for that pilgrimage. We also have an evening pilgrimage at 7.30 for those who can't come uh, during the day, but I invite you to be part of that. One other pilgrimage opportunity tonight, uh, in response to Jesus' words in the Garden of Gethsemane, which follows um, the upper room in the narrative, Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, and you might remember he says to his disciples, could you not watch with me one hour? And so in response to that, we keep a vigil in prayer tonight 
uh, in the chapel starting at 9 tonight after this service ends and continuing to 9 in the morning. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet for prayers, and uh, I'm delighted to say that we've just about got everything covered except the 1 to 2 and the 2 to 3, the wee small hours of the night. So we're still looking for a few people who might feel moved uh, to come and pray and watch with Jesus for an hour uh, during the, those hours, and uh, the sign-up sheet uh, is in the back. One way or another, we'll make sure it's covered. We're not going to leave Jesus without someone to watch with him tonight. Um, I think that's all I want to say, but I, I'm just so touched by the beauty of this service uh, and this hour, and I'm so grateful to be sharing uh, this pilgrimage and this Holy Week and this night with all of you. Bless you. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. <clears throat> On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace 
And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and they began to be grieved and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Washington Clark.